Why did the capacitor kiss the diode? Because they found a potential between them. Welcome everyone to the electrifying world of microcontrollers. Today, we're casting our spotlight on an absolute gem in the field of electronics, the Arduino microcontroller. This tiny yet powerful device has been a game changer, sparking a revolution in do-it-yourself electronics. The Arduino microcontroller, simply known as Arduino, is a tool for making computers that can sense and control more of the physical world than your average desktop computer. It's an open source platform used for building electronics projects. Arduino consists of both a physical programmable circuit board, often referred to as a microcontroller, and a piece of software or IDE, integrated development environment, that runs on your computer used to write and upload computer code to the physical board. From robotics to home automation, Arduino has found its place in countless applications. It's like the Swiss army knife of electronics. So buckle up as we dive into the fascinating world of Arduino microcontrollers. To start off, we'll take a closer look at the Arduino board, the heart of all our future projects. This compact yet powerful device is much more than meets the eye. It's an open source platform used for building electronics projects that integrates a microcontroller and a ready to use environment for software development. The Arduino board is designed to be user-friendly and accessible to both beginners and experienced users. Its layout is quite straightforward. On one side, you'll find a series of digital and analog input-output pins. These allow the Arduino to interact with other devices. On the opposite side, there's a USB connection for linking the board to your computer and a power jack for supplying power to the board. Now, you might be surprised to know that there isn't just one type of Arduino board. There's a whole family of them. The Arduino Uno is a great all-rounder, perfect for beginners due to its simplicity and robustness. For those interested in Internet of Things projects, the Arduino Yun could be your go-to. It combines the power of Linux with the ease of Arduino. If you're looking for something smaller and more cost-effective, consider the Arduino Nano. Despite its size, it packs a punch and is ideal for compact projects. Of course, these are just a few examples from the diverse Arduino family. Each board has its unique features and specialties, designed to cater to a wide range of projects and requirements. The beauty of Arduino lies in its versatility. No matter what your project entails, there's an Arduino board that's the perfect fit. In essence, the Arduino board is more than just a piece of hardware. It's a canvas for creativity, a tool for innovation. It's a gateway to a world where anyone can create interactive objects or environments. Now that you've had your first look at the Arduino board, let's dig a little deeper into its components. We're just scratching the surface here and there's so much more to discover. Stay tuned as we continue our journey into the fascinating world of Arduino. At the center of the Arduino board lies its brain, the microcontroller. Now what exactly is this microcontroller? Picture it as a miniature computer. It's a single integrated circuit that houses a processor, memory, and programmable input-output peripherals all in a tiny package that fits in the palm of your hand. The microcontroller is where all the magic happens. It reads the inputs, processes the data, and then controls the outputs based on the instructions given to it. Think of it like a busy traffic cop at a bustling intersection. The cop, or in our case, the microcontroller, watches and reads the traffic signals, the cars, the pedestrians, and then directs them accordingly. It's always alert, always processing, and always in control. But how does it read inputs? It does so through the digital and analog pins on the Arduino board. These pins act like the microcontroller's eyes and ears, collecting data from the outside world. They can read a multitude of inputs, from temperature and light levels, to the position of a joystick or a button press. Once the microcontroller has read the inputs, it processes the data based on the program you've uploaded. The program is like a set of instructions or rules that the microcontroller follows. After the data has been processed, the microcontroller controls the outputs. The outputs could be anything from turning on a light or a motor to sending a signal to another device. And it does all this at a blistering pace, thousands if not millions of times per second. It's this speed and efficiency that make microcontrollers so invaluable in our modern world. They're in everything from our cars and phones to our home appliances and toys. In essence, the microcontroller is the command center of your Arduino board. It's the heart and soul of the system. And understanding how it works 
is key to unlocking the full potential of Arduino in the world of electronics. Now, let's talk about how the Arduino communicates with the outside world through its pins. Picture this. You're an adventurer in a foreign land, but you have a magical device that allows you to interact with everything around you. Well, that's exactly what the Arduino does. It uses its input and output pins as a gateway to interact with the surrounding world, just like our magical device. There are two main types of pins on the Arduino board. Digital pins and analog pins. The digital pins are like those light switches in your house. They can be either on or off, nothing in between. They serve a two-way communication path, either receiving signals as input or sending signals as output. On the other hand, the analog pins are more like a dimmer switch. They can handle a range of values, not just on and off. Hence, analog pins are used when we need more sophisticated control, like adjusting the brightness of an LED or reading the position of a joystick. But how does this magical device get its power? That's where the power supply pins come into play. There are three types of power pins on the Arduino, VIN, 5V, and 3, 3V. VIN is the input voltage to the Arduino board when it's using an external power source, while the 5V pin supplies a regulated 5 volts, and the 3, 3V pin supplies a regulated 3.3 volts. Both can be used to power up different components. Don't forget, there's also a bunch of ground pins scattered across the board. These are crucial as they complete the electrical circuit, allowing current to flow back after it has done its job. So, whether you're turning on an LED, controlling a motor, or reading from a sensor, it's all done through these tiny pins. They are the bridge between the microcontroller and the external world. Remember, the pins are your gateway to the world outside the Arduino board. Now let's discuss some of the other key components that make the Arduino such a versatile tool. One of these key components is the voltage regulator. Just like a traffic officer controlling the flow of cars, it manages the amount of voltage that is fed into the Arduino. It ensures that the Arduino gets the right amount of power, not too much and not too little, just right to keep things running smoothly. Next, we have the oscillator crystal. Now, this isn't some mystical object from a fantasy novel, although it does sound like it, doesn't it? In truth, it's a small piece of hardware that helps the Arduino keep track of time. It oscillates at a steady frequency, usually 16 megahertz, which the Arduino uses as a kind of heartbeat to synchronize its operations. Then we come to the reset button. This little button is like an emergency escape hatch. When you press it, it resets your Arduino, wiping its memory and starting your program from the beginning. It's a handy little tool when you need to quickly restart your project. Now, let's talk about the USB connection. This is your main line of communication with the Arduino. It's like the mail carrier delivering your letters, only in this case your letters are lines of code and the mail carrier is the USB cable. You write the code on your computer, then send it to the Arduino through the USB connection. The Arduino then reads your code and carries out the instructions bringing your project to life. These components, while small, play a crucial role in the functionality of your Arduino. Each one has a specific job and together they allow the Arduino to do its magic, making it a powerful tool for anyone interested in electronics and programming. So the next time you're working with your Arduino, remember these unsung heroes, these tiny parts that make big things possible. These components, while small, play a crucial role in the functionality of your Arduino. Well, we've certainly covered a lot of ground today. We've journeyed through the intricate world of the Arduino microcontroller, starting with a bird's eye view of the Arduino board down to its smallest component. We've dissected the board and unveiled the microcontroller, the brain of our Arduino, and how it processes and communicates data. We explored the function of the input-output pins and power supply, and how they interact to make our Arduino come alive. We then delve deeper into the other components and features that make the Arduino such a versatile and powerful tool, from its memory storage to its clock speed, each playing a pivotal role in its operation. And with that, you're now well on your way to becoming an Arduino expert. Remember, the only limit to what you can create with Arduino is your imagination. So go ahead and create something amazing.